Hello gorgeous, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going over my favorites from 2023. I have a lot of makeup in front of me. I tried really hard to narrow it down to top two. There are a couple categories that I'm going to have a couple more than two to talk about. So if that sounds like fun, then just keep watching. I wanted to put it out right now that I am not talking about eyeshadow palettes today. There's just no way that I could take it down to two for you. So I'm going to do a separate video on that. Make sure you're subscribed. It will be coming soon. I'm also contemplating whether or not I want to do the worst of 2023. Let me know if that's something that you are interested in. Look how cute my nails are. Aren't those adorable? These are from Timu. They are little Santa hats and sparkles, and they were a dollar and change. <laughs> I did use my own glue. I will link. It's one from Kiss that I really like. I'll link them both below, as well as all of the makeup that I'm talking about today. And of course, what is on my face, I will be discussing today as well, because of course I put my favorites on. I also have my notes in front of me so that I don't forget anything. And it was so awesome going through all of my favorites and fails videos. It was very eye-opening, the things that never left me front and center and the things that I forgot about and am thrilled to have pulled out and I've been using them the last couple days and just reminding myself of how much I love them. The first category is primer. I have a drugstore primer and a high-end primer that just worked so well for me. I am an oily skin type, I have mature skin, and these blur my pores, help keep my oils at bay, all the things that I'm looking for. The first one is this L'Oreal Prime Lab 24 Hour Matte Setter. This has got to be close to being empty. I have used this primer more than any other primer in 2023. It does have a little bit of a scent, but I believe it is under $15, it's not strong and it just does all the things that I need it to do. The other one is this Milk Pore Eclipse Matte Primer. This is newer to my collection, but wow, is it fabulous. Next Sephora sale, I will be getting the full size, or I'll have to make a decision if I run out. <laughs> but these, if you have a skin type like me, highly, highly recommend. In the brow category, a new product that I tried in 2023 that really surprised me, well, truly a line, is the Relove line, which is by Revolution Makeup that is sold at Walmart. I did a dedicated video, which I will try to link the appropriate videos in the description box below, but I checked out Relove from Walmart. Everything is under $5, and I found some great things. One of the great things that I found is this eyebrow pencil. It is the Blade Brow. I have mine in dark brown. I believe this is less than $3. It is a really nice creamy texture, easy to apply, easy to blend. It has a really small tip for that precision. This is, I forgot to mention, I have the milk on my face today. I have this Relove brow pencil in my brows today, along with another product. Easy, great, would I repurchase it? Absolutely. Brow products, in my personal opinion, you should not be spending a lot of money on. There's so many good at the drugstore, but it's just really nice at Walmart to save those couple of bucks and get a brow pencil that's gonna do a good job. In the brow gel category, I'm a huge lover of Sephora Collection. I have so many things from Sephora Collection that I love, and there's another one in here today. But this is the Shape and Set Clear Brow Gel. It's got a very cool wand that is flat on one side and a brush on the other. If you hear that screaming, that's Luke. It's fine. <laughs> it's got really good hold. It is an affordable drugstore price. I love it. And the last brow product is a two-in-one. Newer to my collection, but I'm finding myself reaching for it over and over. This is the Maybelline Build-A-Brow. And this is cool because it's got the brow pen on the one side and on the other side, 
you have a brow gel. I will not use a brow pen to completely draw in my eyebrows, but this is really good when I have over blended my brows or I go to put my gel in and I notice some sparse spots. You can take the pen and just easily flick it right where you need that coverage and it's just so nice. Today I have a couple flicks and then I took the gel and set the brows. For eyeshadow primer, you know that 99% of the time I reach for my Ulta Matte Eyeshadow Primer. That is my number one, but one that came very, very close that would save you a couple of bucks and does pretty much the same thing is this one from Essence. This is the Prime Like a Boss Eyeshadow Primer. I believe it's less than $5. The texture is very, very similar to the Ulta Matte. It might be a hair more hydrating. Mine is almost empty. This is what it looks like and it just, the tiniest bit is needed. You rub it onto your eyes and it's going to really help your eyeshadow last, your eyeshadow pop, all the things. Never skip your eyeshadow primer. Let's talk about eyeliner for a moment. I use, on the day-to-day, -day, three different liners on my eyes. I have my pencil liner, I have my liquid liner, and then I love a bright white inner corner. Sometimes I use a, a liquid shadow or a shimmer shadow, sometimes I don't. So I have four different recommendations here for you that just knocked my socks off in 2023. The first is going to be a pencil liner from Essence in the name of Stay and Play. They, the previous one was called Extreme Lasting and it was fabulous and somehow they made it even better. This is what I have on my upper and bottom waterline today. It is creamy, it is smooth, it is long lasting, and the price is right. My other favorite pencil liner is this one from Sephora. I just talked about this in my Saturday, two day ago video. This is the Ultimate Gel Eyeliner in Matte Black, and this I'm finding myself reaching for, I haven't put it back in the drawer, it stays right on top of my vanity because it's just so gentle going in the waterline with and it's inky and it's nice and right now it's on sale. I'm crossing my fingers that it's not leaving us. Sephora Collection has other black liners that I do like as well, but this one has become my favorite. For liquid liners, the Relove Slick Flick. I really reached for this a lot. It is not waterproof, but on the day to day, it does a great job. Now I am not one that goes all the way across with my liner. I like to go more on the outside and just a little bit in. And this one is easy for someone who is intimidated by liquid liner. I had a great time with this. My number one is this one from Trace Luce, and I hope that they're not in trouble. I feel like I heard through the grapevine that they might be closing. Let me know if you've heard anything about this. I really, really hope not. I just discovered this brand this year and I'm loving it. I only have a highlighter and this liner, but I love it. Just opened it the wrong way. I love the blue packaging, so, so pretty. And then something about the point just makes it so easy to put my liner on. This is what I have on today, love it. And the last liner is this one from LA Girl, this one. I'm so happy that I found, I love the BH Cosmetics white pencil and it's getting harder and harder to get my hands on it. I tried a couple different white liners from the drugstore. I don't think I tried anything high end and none of them were as good as the BH. This is the closest thing that I have found and thankfully the price is affordable. This is the LA Girl Pastel Dream Auto Eyeliner and it is in the shade Marshmallow and this is just in the corner of each of my eyes. I feel like it helps me pop. I don't like my under eyes, anything to brighten my eyes, make me look more awake, I'm game. And the last liner shout out, funny enough, is from Timu. These little glitter liquid shadows, they remind me of the old Urban Decay Space Cowboy? I can't remember the name of it, but there was a gold glitter liner that I had from Urban Decay that I loved, and I used it until there was nothing left in it. Today I have just a little bit of the silver in my inner corner, 
but this it just comes out looking like a liner I think these are a dollar and change and they have lots of different shades I'm just a silver and gold kind of girl so you can keep it fairly precise dries down doesn't crumble off my eyes I really like it another category I will misbehave a little bit I don't have a top two I have a top five <laughs> I am a mascara addict I love trying new mascaras a new one comes out and I want it especially when it's drugstore but I do have a couple high-end in here that I was able to stumble onto with a mini or got it in a boxy charm let me just tell you the first one that I fell in love with this year was the L'Oreal telescopic lift I don't have it in my stash right now I will pop up a picture but it has a very interesting wand kind of like the Sephora gel where it's sort of flat on one side and then has bristles on the other that one I loved it because it was different and it just really really if I took my time could build and build and build and just get the most amazing lashes the second one is for under my eyes that was the Milani tubing I also do not have that in my stash but I will tell you that mascara never dies it is wet so you do have to be careful that is the one slightly negative thing about it but at the same time it lasts and lasts and lasts so if you're only using it on your bottom lashes I prefer to use tubing on my bottom because I do get a lot of smudging it lasted a long time it was great I finally decluttered it just for the health of my eyes the next one was the Mac Mac stack that I got a sample of and wow that is a really special mascara would I run out and spend full price at the high-end cost of that probably not but if I saw it on sale ooh, I would get it super fast it just builds and builds and builds and you can just have the fluttery long lashes or you can go in for a second or third coat and really get some bold lashes I also liked the benefit fan fest I do have a baby in my drawer but I've not opened it I'm saving it because again I have too many open mascaras I really enjoyed the first baby that I had I had a little one and then I got another little one in a Sephora gift set I love it I recommend it if you want the fluttery lashes however I may have to open it because the new L'Oreal panorama mascara I did a little short with that one is blowing me away and really reminds me of the benefit really nice fanned out mascara I'm not gonna say it's a favorite of the year because I've only had it a week or so maybe two weeks but it's really growing on me and I love the gold packaging the last one which is the one on my eyes today is this one from one size I've had a hit and miss relationship with one size by Patrick star I've had things that I hated I've had things that I love this is one that I love I got this in a set with an eyeliner didn't love the eyeliner love 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 the mascara eyelashes today this is one coat I just went back and forth building one dip I never dipped back in and I feel like my lashes are super long and voluptuous and it lasts and it doesn't drop my curl really gorgeous mascara and on my bottom lashes I know this is going to be a favorite but I really haven't had it very long is this new one from elf I'm just mentioning it because it's what's on my face this is the one I've been reaching for because the price is right and it does a nice job and I've had no issues with removing it or with smudging great job elf before I move on to the face I might as well acknowledge my eyes if you are a regular viewer of my channel you're noticing that my eyes are blue when my eyes are not normally blue <laughs> 2023 was the year that a brand called coal eyes reached out to me they have colored contacts you can get them without a prescription you can get them with a prescription you can get really wild ones that are all black or all white or cat eyes or lizard eyes or you can just change your eye color and their prices are reasonable they sent me some contacts my favorites are these I believe it's called leopard blue and then I had another one that's a really bright blue I wear those two the most I think I've always coveted blue eyes I have two sisters that both had blue eyes and I'm the one that got the brown but I had a lot of fun with them I'm so appreciative that they sent them to me just to let you know about them I'm giving my honest review I do have a discount code that I believe is still active I'll have it linked in the description box below 
Moving on to face, I'll start with the tool. I discovered the Stands Out Sponge in 2023. This is not a new product, but gosh, do I love it. I used it today. It is soft, it is squishy. I, I try to clean it as much as I can, but my skin just looks so smooth when I use it. I'm not a big sponge person. I am more of my fingers or a brush. This I want to use. I got it on sale from Amazon, I believe for Black Friday, and wow. It's great. Favorite foundations from 2023. The one that I'm wearing today, which is the Maybelline Superstay 24 Hour Skin Tint. I never thought I would like this foundation. I tried it just because of the hype. People were saying that it was long lasting. Thank you to e.l.f. because I had already tried the Halo Glow and thought, oh, wow, I can wear this. And I do like the Halo Glow, but I like this one a little bit better because with the Halo Glow, it's not quite enough to wear it on its own. If I'm having a beautiful skin day, absolutely, but I can get away with this. I have nothing else other than primer on my face. I didn't spot conceal with concealer. All I have on is this. And while it is a little shinier than I like, I just make sure that my T-zone is mattified with a primer, with the proper powders, and then that inner glow, that healthy look. I don't want to shine. I just want that healthy glow on my face and that's what this one gives. My only complaint about this one is that it is messy. Maybelline, please redo this foundation with a pump. I had to clean this before I came in here today. It was on here, it's spitting out here. This wand that comes out, this dropper, is a pain in the tuchus. But I love this foundation anyway. The other one, not new to the market, but was new to me in 2023. I tried the Revlon Color Stay. This is their long wear makeup. It comes in two different versions. You can get normal to dry or normal to, or combination to oily. Mine is combination to oily. And I have really gone through this foundation. I love it so much. I wear it more than any other foundation in my drawer probably, really fantastic foundation. If you have dry skin, go for the other one. Concealer is a very hard product for me. I dislike 99% of concealers, probably because I dislike my under eyes. I've been told that I have dark circles. I've been told that I don't have dark circles, that I just have shadows. I do have deep set eyes. Either way, on the daily, my under eyes always look a little too dark for me. So I like a very bright under eye. I'm also turning 50 in August, so I have some fine lines under my eyes. And I have found some good eye creams that are really helping. I have found an under eye brightener from e.l.f. that I love. This is the Putty Color Corrector Eye Brightener in the lightest shade. I love this stuff. I use it almost every day, and I believe it's $6. I do have it on today. So all the help I can get for the concealers. But the two that really blew me away in 2023, this is the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Concealer, and it's funny. I believe I bought this because they came out with a new one, and I was watching all these reviews about the new one, and I have not tried it yet. If you have it, let me know. I will try it. But somebody said in their video that they felt that the Light Illusion had a little more coverage. That's all I needed to hear. That and the fact that it was lightweight. Both of these foundations are super thin. I do not like a thick foundation. I do not like a thick concealer. This is nice and lightweight. It is brightening, it is smoothing, it is not drying, especially when I prep those under eyes with the proper cream, with that under eye brightener, which I know it says under eye brightener, but it's also very moisturizing. Let it set for a couple minutes and then go in with this. Less is more as we get older with our lines and wrinkles, this is a great drugstore option. My fancy one that I had to try, I got pulled into the hype, everybody was saying it was so wonderful, this Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer. I already am in love with this woman's eyeshadows. I haven't had a lot of experience with her face products, but I tried this concealer and wow, I'm glad that I did. I have this on today. It's really probably one of the highest coverage thinnest smoothing concealers I've ever used. I always say that Tarte Shape Tape is my number one, and I still think it gives the ultimate coverage, but you really have to be careful with that one. It is a bit thicker, and I'm over the big fat 
wands on concealers. I love how teeny tiny this wand is because I do the Wayne Goss technique where I literally look down and draw a tiny line on the darkest area of my eyes just to avoid over applying and then carefully tap it in with a brush or my finger. I go a little bit more into that inner crevice area in here for brightening and I love it. And then the last concealer is this one from NARS. I bought this for under my eyes. I didn't like it under my eyes and realized that it wasn't a bright enough shade anyway, so I started using it on my face and I jokingly refer to this as the magic eraser. So I'll take a small brush and tap it in here and I will just tap on my face those spots that need a little bit extra help and then I will take my stands out sponge or my brush and just tap them in really lovely I've been hearing great things about this for years and years I'm so glad I picked it up I will never not have this in my stash for bronzer I was a good girl I narrowed it down to two now the Milani cream bronzer is fabulous I am enjoying that but I just got it I'm gonna give it a shout out because it's really really good but I need to keep playing with it one that I've had longer that I know that I love and this can be a personal preference because there are the sponge tip applicators, there are the wands, there are all different types of ways to apply a liquid bronzer, but I believe that the pot is my favorite. This is the one from Juvia's Place. This is in the shade Sunkissed. This is what I have on today. I did set it with a powder bronzer that I'm about to talk about, but this one is beautiful. Sunkissed is a nice, cool shade it's very blendable it's very long lasting i heard people i heard somebody talking about how they felt it was glittery i don't see that i see a cream matte bronzer and i enjoy it very much and juvia's place again they have me with their eyeshadows powder bronzer i'm gonna give it to ulta beauty this was a desperate attempt to find something similar to my flower beauty and this one has taken over. I still have my Flower Beauty and I believe they are coming back. It's a good one, the Flower Beauty bronzer. But this one is fabulous. It is a baked bronzer that has a little bit of a sheen to it. I have worn it on its own, but I really like to set my bronzer with it, which is what I did today. I also have this in my crease. Juvia's Place is going to take the win for liquid blush as well. I love this formula of liquid blush. If you are low on funds, find a color you love because this will probably last you the rest of your life. This is one of my favorites. This one is Blush Lily and I put the tiniest dots on my face today and oh my goodness, it just goes and goes and goes. You do have to be careful. So the teensiest dot, kind of like Rare Beauty, but I believe you get more product in this one and it might be less expensive. I'm gonna go for the Juvia's Place. I have two shades of this, Adore, lasts. I don't have to set it with powder blush, although I did today. Another hybrid cream to powdery, really special formula goes to Danessa Myricks. This is her Yummy Skin Blush. You know I am obsessed with her Yummy Skin Foundation, Balm, Powder, all in one. I'll pop up a picture, love it. It was in my favorites last year, still use it all the time but this cream blush came out from her and it is a cream to powder this one is rosé and brunch kind of a warmer pink but this formula again super super pigmented you do the tiniest tap in there and then just go and if I who am the most heavy-handed <laughs> makeup application heavy-handed just in life <laughs> can use these products without making a mess you can too this is a beautiful product. I would purchase more shades of this. And the last blush, I had to talk about the Essence Baked Blush, and I'm hearing it in everybody else's favorites, and I'm hearing it for a reason. This is a lovely blush formula. You have to like a little bit of a sheen to your skin. If you're a matte matte girl, you're not gonna like that, but I do like the Essence The Blush as well if you're looking for something inexpensive. I have three of these blushes now. My favorite is this one here called Goldie Cassis. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but I love it. It's a pinky purple sort of shade. 
It is not super pigmented, but it can be built. I have it over the Juvia's Place blush today, and it's very high-end looking. It's very reminiscent of Hourglass powders for less than $6. Find a shade you like. You should definitely try this. Three more categories left. Let's do powders next. For under the eyes, I fell in love with this Givenchy. I know I have not had it long, but no other powder under my eyes compares. It is brightening, it is smoothing. Of course, it's what I have under my eyes today. There are different variations. This one is the Satin Blanc, and I'm hoping this lasts a long time because this is not cheap. It does have a perfume scent, it does not bother me. When it runs out, I'll buy another might even treat myself to the big one the next sephora sale i can't help it i hate using this word but i am obsessed with this powder for under my eyes another powder that i had forgotten about is this one here from kimchi chic i would heard other people talk about this powder especially the oily girls so i ordered it i think it's only around 20 dollars, which is not that bad it came with this beautiful puff that i have washed i had it filthy dirty but this powder is so finely milled and beautiful. This is what I have on my face today. I'll go ahead and dirty my puff. It is just so smoothing. It's really, really beautiful. The next powder that I really enjoyed is not new to the market, but I did a full face of LA Girl. And this LA Girl Pro Face is really nice. It has pigment to it. It's really, really smoothing. I like to use it to sort of clean up the edges. This was a big surprise to me because the price is affordable and it's a nice, smoothing, mattifying powder. And the last powder that I fell in love with in 2023 is this one from Lunar Beauty. This is another one that I kept hearing all the hype. I have one palette from Lunar Beauty and I adore it. It is one of my very favorite palettes. I'll pop up a picture. So I love Manny. I tried his new lipstick formula this year. That was really nice, but this powder is beautiful. This is the Lunar Beauty Luniversal Setting Powder. I got this luckily from my BoxyCharm at a discount and it is stunning. Super smoothing. It smells good. All the things. For lip liner, my two favorites for 2023. One is newer to my collection and I just know that it's going to be a staple. I have a lot of lip liners. I have ones that I love from Essence from Morphe. It's Morphe Sweet Tea I've been obsessed with for a couple of years now. And while I love that shade, it doesn't last very long on my lips. Even the new one from e.l.f. Beautiful. I love the creaminess of it. I love the shades that I got. I just wish that it lasted a little bit longer. Well, earlier in the year, I'll have to pop up a picture. I discovered the Catrice Plumping Lip Liner. I believe they're four dollars and wow they do not move, which is amazing. You do have to be careful if you go over your lip lines multiple times, it can sort of get stuck once it sets because once it sets, it sets, but it will stay so long. The end of the day, my lipstick will be worn and gone and there's that lip liner. Same can be said with this one. And the only reason I can't show you the Catrice is it's in my purse. <laughs> and this one is newer to my collection, but I just knew immediately as soon as I tested the longevity and I checked out the shade, that it was tippy top fave. This one is from Revlon. This is their Colorstay Longwear Lip Liner. This is nude and this is what I have on my lips today. Highly recommend either one of those. The Catrice is less expensive than the CoverGirl, but the CoverGirl is easier to get your hands on. For lipstick, I have two. Again, one is missing, I believe, in my purse. Essence reformulated their liquid lipstick this year. The other one that they had, I had a red. I would wear it. It was very dry. I didn't care. I still liked the shade. I liked the long wearing. A drier lip doesn't bother me so much. But they reformulated it, and yes, they made it so much better. I picked mine up. I believe it's in Cinnamon Spice. I'll pop up a picture. Love, love, love the shade, the formula. It's very lightweight. I mean, it does dry down, but it's nowhere near as drying as the previous formula, and it's so inexpensive love it. And the other one comes from my beloved LYS Beauty. They came out with these matte lipsticks that I just love the packaging that I have it on there wrong. 
this is what it looks like it's got like a matte pink and then a rose gold and then this just design is so elegant going on the lips it's just beautiful this is what I have on my lips today it's long lasting I now have this shade which is moody I also have the red one and the last category is lip gloss and the one lip gloss that I tried in 2023 that was new that I really enjoyed and that I have on my face today is this one here this is the essence juicy balm I like it because it is super shiny and it tastes like mint but look at that I'll put a little bit more on I just love that peppermint smell there's no tingling there's no burning there's no actual plumping but face it lip gloss itself when your lips are shining they look bigger Ooh, how could I forget my setting spray number one 2023 is when I discovered it the one size on till dawn mattify waterproof setting spray it sells out all the time for a reason the only negatives about this spray is that it does have a strong scent that can kind of take your breath away make sure that you close your eyes and you hold your breath and I've heard some jokingly say it's like hairspray I don't care it makes my face matte it helps my makeup stay I love it the nozzle has never let me down I love how it dries immediately no fans that I'm waiting for it is the best let me know do you agree with my favorites do you have some of these products do you love them do you hate them what were your favorite products in 2023 I would love to hear about it if you're not subscribed please consider subscribing before you leave I would love to have you join me I upload videos on Mondays and Saturdays give the video a thumbs up it really helps my channel and of course leave me a comment I love chatting with you in the comment section have a wonderful day